Yes, people, hope everyone is good. Brent Aronson is staying at Leeds United. It's happening. Um, he's had a discussion with Daniel Farker, a good early discussion about the future. And they've come to together. And the decision is he will stay. He'll be part of the squad next season. What are my thoughts? Will this work? Here's some tactical analysis on what I believe he can bring strengths and weaknesses to this lead side next season. Let's get into it. I'm going to go through every tactical aspect, I believe, you know, based on the system we play and how we play and how he will fit into that. The first one is transition slash counterattack from deep. That midfield position from deep. Let's get into it. So here's one, uh, and, and as you guys know, well, a lot of you guys know who, who've been here a while, I probably watch more Bundesliga than the Premier League. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just the weird person I am. I enjoy it. It's good. So I've seen quite a bit of Brendan, and he has struggled at times. But we're talking about why the decision was made to keep him at Leeds United, why they had that discussion, and why it would be part of the championship, which is much lower than the Bundesliga. Trust me. And this is one aspect of his game that I absolutely love, and I always have. There's a lot of things he needs to improve on, and they will be in this. Don't worry. But right now, let's talk about the transitional play from deep and how that can affect Leeds United and how that can help Leeds United. Just pick the ball up here for her um, Union Berlin. As you can see, he's in a deep position. Very deep. Again, I'll just show it out. From this position, takes on one with these, takes on two with these, takes on three with these. Then he's in this position. From seven seconds, eight seconds, it takes one man on, two man on, three man on. Boom. Now he's in an attacking position. That's what we don't have. We don't have that midfield player at Leeds United who can drop deep, drive the ball, and create transitions this quick. We don't have that. That is a, that's a, an aspect of Brendan Harrison's game that we all know from watching him at times at Leeds that he does have and does show. He's always had that side to it. The issues come in other areas, one of them being this final ball from this area here, straight pass through to the 14, 1v1, or is it on goal? He overhits it, right? So the process, the transition is great from deep areas, taking guys on, driving up the pitch, getting you into a position to be dangerous is excellent. It's that final ball, isn't it? The decision making in the final, the execution in the final bit. That's the problem with Brendan. That's what he needs to develop. Is number two, the second example of what I'm talking about. This team have it here. Again, defensive. Look, look how deep he is as well, receiving the ball. Defensive duty is playing deep, playing that role. What I like about Brendan, and this, this is one thing that I've always liked about Brendan, is how quick he likes to go forward, as we've just shown with the ball, but even off the ball, movement, recognizing space is what he is very good at. Here, the striker drops deep. You can see by the red arrow. Striker drops into this position. Brent Harrison knows straight away this guy's engaging. He's left this space. I'll give it into him. And straight away, I'll run into the space that he's left. So he does that. Straight, quick, forward, boom. Early pass. Transition. Striker recognizes it. Brendan's already gone. So the second he gets that ball, yeah. He's got all that space to attack. And this is where Brendan's really good. That forward movement and understanding where the space is and understanding where the danger and where he can attack. Brendan has that. That is one part of his game he's very good at. You know? And we, we saw that in periods in the Premier League. So from this to this, from this, sorry, to this, to this. Quick movement, understanding where the space is. Transitional he is a dangerous guy to have on that pitch. He definitely is, and we all know that. Right, we were all aware of that. And again, he keeps going up the pitch. 1v1 with this guy. Leaves him on the ground. And then because of that movement, because of that quick determination, that quick play, 3v2 at the back. Keeps driving a little too long. Again, decision-making, too many touches. Release it earlier, Brendan. He had to release it a little bit earlier because now they kind of narrowed in, but they're kind of on a high line. So the, the, pass, the pass is there, it isn't really there. So he does give the ball to this guy, but it's slightly behind him. But again, decision-making in the final third needs to improve. But this part of his game is ridiculous. It just is. Also, Leeds United come up against low blocks, come up against deep, part of the bus, whatever you want to call it. Leeds come up against that a lot. We're not a transition team. We're good in transition, but we're not a complete transition team. We're just not. We're a possession-based team, which means a lot of the time we come up against low blocks. We don't have a central profile or even a profile that is really good at breaking that down. We don't. 
we have individuals with different parts of that, but together as a player who can do that, we don't have it. Brendan can be a part of that puzzle. He can be. And here's why. Again, receiving that ball deep, we've seen this a lot from our midfield players, right? We do receive the ball deep. But how productive are we going forward when we get it from deep? We're not. Georgie can be. But a lot of the times in this build-up, Georgie is here. He's one of these two guys, right? Again, it's a different shape, different formation to us. It's a different style. But Brendan being that, Todd Cantwell role, which remember I mentioned in the video, having that freedom to pick the ball up and progressing it wherever he needs to on the pitch is a role which he can do when he's on the pitch. He can do that. And that's where he's best for me. That will need more developing, obviously, but he really can do it. Gets the ball in deep here. And again, look, this is against a block, a defensive shape here, very defensive shape. Drives forward and gives the ball to this guy. What Brendan does, and the guy gives it him back, which helps, it's a one-two. So Brendan gives it to the guy and runs into this area where this guy's moving out of. When he gets it in the area, he touches it past the defender. Boom. He gets it in this area, and his first touch is past this defender. Now, what this does, coming from central areas, he runs slightly out wide, which does only drag the defender, but drags their centre midfielder here. You see that? And by doing that, there he is, the eight and the certain defender. It leaves space at the edge. It's a key movement. He doesn't run central. He goes wide, which creates space at the edge of the box. Now the block isn't so solid because you've got two guys on him. You create a 2v1, 2v1 defensively, which leaves space central at the edge of the box for the guy here who give it him to run into and shoot, which he does. Look at all the space he's got on the edge of the box. And that's because the run Brendan made from deep, remember, passed it, made that, found the little tight spaces that you can work in, attracted two defenders, left space at the edge of the box. This guy hits it in the top corner. Second, this isn't really a block. This is more of a running from deep. But, but again, against Bayern Munich, this one, running from deep. Gets the ball in this midfield area here. See, I'll move my head for this one. Gets the ball in this midfield area. And from here, not really much of a threat. But what does he do? He turns him with ease. Drives forward. Really, from, from this area, nothing really on. He's taking him on, boom. Two or three seconds later, he's now on your back line because he has that low centre gravity. He has that agility and that balance to take a guy on. He has that. He always has. That's one part of his game he's got. Now we come to the criticism. This bit's really good. In this position here, everyone's looking now going, surely he passes it there. No. He shoots. He shoots. And this is the decision-making side of it. That build-up, which we do need, which he can do, is key for Leeds. We don't have a central player who can do that. Right, Georgie can do that, but for the most part, Georgie is more effective higher up. Ben Fark doesn't really trust him that deep all so much because of obvious reasons, right? He's still learning that side of it and how to maintain the ball. Georgie will, let me just clarify, this is competition. Whether Georgie plays wide, the top, in the 10, it's competition in the squad with Brendan. That's what you need. Now, don't give it issues. Wrong decision. Again, decision-making. Something he has to work on. Taking that extra touch at times. Something he has to work on 100%. Working in tight spaces again, the third and final one for this section. Gets the ball here again, not really a block, but coming from deeper in tight spaces. Gets the ball here. And this is where he scores. And this is a really good goal. It's really smart movement. It really is. Gets the ball here. Techs on the defender. Techs him on with ease again. Drives and drives. So he gets to the edge of the box. And now he makes the right decision. A lot of the time he doesn't. And that is a big criticism. Why he hasn't quite got the goals and assists because of that decision making. But here he does. So again, this defender. So when Brendan beats this guy, he's driving at this defender here. Which means this defender is vacating the space. And Brendan notices that. So what he does, the second this defender is out of that line, which you can see he's off the line, he's come up. Brendan recognises the striker can give it there. 
I'm going to just run into this space that this guy's left. The, the, the striker does well to recognize that. And there you go. Into him. Brendan runs round into that space where the defenders took away. And attracted to Brendan. Yeah. One over one. Top corner. Goal. That's how he can be effective. In this position. Three seconds later, by the way. He's in the box. Five seconds later, he's shooting. That's it. That's how quick he can be. In a team that is slow with us, and doesn't have that central kind of penetration, a play like this, if he can just fix that decision-making and understanding of the final third and where the best option is, would be key for Legion United. Could. Let me clarify. These players have to prove this, but they have it there. Detail, using body. There's a lot of chat about his body. Right, let me just give my thoughts on it. So obviously, look, one thing I always stick up for Brendan is, is this whole rhetoric, and I'll get into it, about the gym and needs to get bigger. For me, it's not about that. It's about conditioning. There's a bit, there's a difference between building muscle and conditioning yourself properly. And Cree is a perfect example from that. So Cree Somerville is a better player because of his weight and his size, right? Cree hasn't just got bigger shoulders and a bigger chest. He's conditioned his body to where he probably doesn't weigh as much probably doesn't weigh um, less than he did, but he's stronger because he's built more muscle and maybe reduced fat. Brendan Aronson is the same type of person. Brendan Aronson's core strengths rely on him being light, being nimble, having that agility. That is all part of the way he is. However, that can be enhanced with conditioning, right? Using what you've got, using your frame, to build something a little more sturdy and solid so that when you are in them physical duels, you can then use your body effectively, if that makes sense. And I'm, you're talking to me, who is literally a body double of Brendan Aronson, who constantly got told you're too small and then I run past the person easily. If you, if you can build this thing around you that you're quicker than them, you're more agile than them, you can think smarter than them, you know where the space is, you don't have to be in a physical battle with them because you've already gone past them by the time they're thinking of smashing you. You don't need to be strong. This is football. You can be any body shape you want and be good at this sport, but you have to define your play based on what you are, right? If Brendan Aronson conditions himself to have that maybe a little more core strength, right? So when he is in a tussle, he can get his body across the defender quicker, right? And more effective. So then in order to foul him, the defender has to go through him. Right, if, he, if he's not giving that resistance, the defender will just brush him off. But if he can get his body in the way, and he's got that little bit of car strength in there, he can, he can be, he'll, he'll have to foul him to get the ball. And that's what's key. That's the difference. It's the difference between going and doing weights and conditioning your body. And conditioning, you can do so many different ways. I'm not going to get into that. Right, it's completely different. Of course, doing weight stuff is part of that, but it's not necessarily lifting weights. It's different types of training that help you condition so you're quicker, stronger more powerful, that's the key part of it. And that, that's what you need to do without affecting the athlete. You affect the athlete, you affect what he's good at, and you don't want to do that. So it's conditioning. And here's an example. Gets the ball here, checks your shoulder. This is a good example. He gets his body in the way of the defender. Boom, fouls it. Now, the final bit we're talking about here, uh, yeah, where can he play the 10 or wide? This is where I talk about the free roll people. Todd Cantwell, free roll. This is it. Because he can do either for me in this system. And let me just clarify, this is competition. This is not saying Brendan starts. This is an option that has the potential. Okay? Let me just clarify that. Wing play, wide play. Let's see what he can do. So gets the ball here. This is, again, I've just picked out two examples of many. Now, this defender, boom, gets the ball out wide. And look how wide. Wide right, by the way. He's playing the 10. Wide right. He's gone wide right. That little bit of freedom. And the midfielder's gone into the box. 1v1 out wide. How many times have we seen our wingers here in this position cut back inside to all these players? Endless. The only one that doesn't is Dan James. And Dan James is good at this. Just look how much space. And Harrison is so quick. And this is what I talk about, the conditioning. He's so quick. His fibres are boom. His balance is ridiculous. And all that agility, balance, power off the mark, lightness, 
leads to this. The fact he's drifted past him and the defender's not even reacted by sticking a leg out because he's gone so quick and it's so instinctive sh- clearly shows the ability and the talent that you don't want to get rid of in that sense. But again, he beats him with ease, but it's this bit. Quick ball across, but he doesn't. He takes an extra touch. He doesn't do the quick ball across. He takes an extra touch and he goes straight to the keeper's hands. Decision making, extra touch. Cut that out. Figure that out. That's the weakness here. That's my problem with Brendan, right? Problem again, not problem, is it? You know what I mean? Weakness. Error to improve. Wide player again, number two. This time on the left. Same game on the left side. Now, look what he does here. Again, the defender comes out to him. He recognizes that the space is beyond him there. He doesn't stop, cut back, and pass it. He wants to be direct. He wants to go at them. That's the key part again. Having that little brave moment. And again, it's times where he shouldn't do it. And that's where it comes back to the decision making, right? But this is the time where he does. Exit him. Guy dives in, kicks it through the legs. He, know, he knows where the space is. He knows what he's doing. He's waiting for him. Stays on his feet, gets round him. Again, the 18 comes into him. Makes us him too. That's double Megs. Now, this is the bit again. What does he do here, do you think? Does he shoot? No. He doesn't. He doesn't shoot. He doesn't pass it to this guy or this guy. He takes an extra touch. This is the extra touch part. This is the confidence in the final third. The understanding in the final third, what's the best option? Daniel Farker has to get this into him. Because if he can, that's a very, very effective player at this level. Believe me. He doesn't. He takes an extra touch. and decides to shoot when the defender's right in front of him. And there's better options to give it out wide or at the edge of the box for a shot. There's no one back and there's no one around him. You can take a touch and hit it. Decision making. Key word. Where does he play? Attacking midfield? Yes, for me. Why? I'll tell you why. Why is he not a winger? Why is he a midfielder? And he can do both. And let me clarify that. And that's the key part of this. That freedom bit is important. If he is on the left or the right, but he has that role to be free, he's practically anywhere. He can create combinations and build up play anywhere. That's what's important, right? And that's where he needs to mature his game. So he can be really effective in that role because he can do it. But it's about being effective in it. For me, I've gone with 10. Because of off the ball things and out of possession. That is the only difference for me. Again, looking at the press, and we know he can do this. He's a central presser here. He's not playing the nine, but he's in, in the press he is because of how good he is. What he also brings is that connection between the midfielders, which Georgie and Piro do not have. That defensive protection for the midfielders, they do not have. Okay? If the ball comes into this area here, Georgie or Piro are not really reacting to it and getting back. They're kind of like, oh, oh, I should probably get back. Whereas Brendan is, as soon as it goes past him, he's turned around. He's like, right, I need to get back. So the ball goes into the midfielder. He's alert and ready. We know that. This midfielder has a slightly bad touch. Brendan's on him. Georgie and Pura, I had, he wouldn't, they wouldn't be on that. They wouldn't be as alert. And look how tight he is for the midfield here. There's no gaps. He's not in this area. He's not in this area. He's on it. He's on it. He's creating uncomfortable moments for the defenders. So the second they have a bad touch, you know Brendan's on it. And he's driving. Gives the ball here. Guy has a shot. Don't go in, I believe. But this is the key. From this position now, one bad touch. 49, 51, 55. Six seconds again. From being out of possession, defensively, you're having a chance at the other side in six seconds. The speed, the central speed, we don't have that. And that's why that 10 roll is important for me. Or the position he is on the pitch is important centrally because we need that central speed. We don't have it. And if we've been transition team, or we need something to break down, he's part of that because he has the attributes to do that. So yeah, that's it, people. The, 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 core, the core ability of this guy, his talent, his ball control, his dribbling skills, his effectiveness, even when he is dribbling, for me, it is impressive. It always has been. The biggest issue for me and Brendan is, one, the mentality side of it in the Premier League. I think he did get overused, but he didn't the risks he stopped doing the things he was good at, at the start of the season his confidence dropped massively he wasn't ready for the Premier League I'd argue he needed one or two years out of it he wasn't ready now hopefully he's learned from a difficult Bundesliga experience Daniel Farker's had a conversation with him he wants him to part of the team 
Brendan thinks he wants he can be part of the team. That is a discussion and that is the final result. I'm glad that's come now in June, at the start of June, as opposed to the end of July when other players are saying, I'm not speaking to the manager until that time. I don't care where you are. It's a simple discussion. Are you ready to stay? Because we can't be hanging on. We need to get on with it. And I'm glad at least we've got a decision from Brendan and that is right. Given other situations, whatever, I'm staying. I'm willing to fight for my place and rebuild my career. And that's good. And Daniel Fark will work with him and improve him. I genuinely believe that. He has all of the bits. He has the talent. The conditioning is huge. Like I say conditioning because it's different to gym. <laughs> conditioning is different. It's about using what you have and making what you have stronger. That's what I should have said earlier. It's not about getting more. It's about using what you have and making what you have stronger. Right? That's the key. Because at the end of the day, people, and I can tell you that, some people just struggle to build muscle. But you have the core there. You just need to build on it and make what you have stronger. Right? I'm never going to be massive, no matter how much I weigh. Trust me. Unless I do illegal things, which I won't do. But yeah, conditioning, one. Decision-making, take an extra touch. He does that too much. There's too many times where it takes extra touch. The quick example is this, sorry. So there he is at the edge of the box. Give the ball here, ball across to this guy who's going to shoot, shot on goal. Instead of doing that, he takes an extra touch. Doesn't need to take that one. Doesn't need to take it. Takes an extra touch. Instead of passing it, the extra touch is took, and he shoots now. That's my point. Decision making, take an extra touch. Final third, cleanness, if you like. Build on that, conditioning, and what a player we have at this level. Look, I know his weaknesses, I know his strengths, we've seen him. I've watched quite a bit of him in the Bundesliga this year, maybe six or seven games of him. He struggled at times. But in the last three or four games of the season, five, six maybe, I did see an improvement when he played. I think now at a lower level than the Bundesliga might be where we see him actually shine and build everything he needs to be a better footballer, like we did Somerville, like we did Jorginho Rutter, like we've seen with what Dan James has revitalised his career. You know, how many more? That entire team, Junior Firpo, Archie Gray's developed there. It's a good league to develop. Might be a step back, but it's a step back to go too forward. If you do it right, it is. But yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know. Um, like I said, try to be balanced. I like the player because it reminds me of myself, to be honest. That's, yeah, uh, and traumas of people telling me I'm not big enough when I'm running past them. But anyway, I appreciate all the support. You're all legends. Yeah, what do you think?